we're looking at the third section where we're being asked to solve. Now, uh, the reason why we couldn't solve any of the problems before on chapter four test form A is because we didn't have any equal signs. Here we have the equal signs, so we can actually find the value of x. All right, so I'm going to rewrite problem 13 really quickly. So we have 3x minus quantity 5x minus 7 is equal to 13. Now, the most common problem, Campbell, what? the most common problem on this type of uh, problem is that you forget that this negative sign is applying to everything inside the parentheses. So this binomial, bi meaning two, nomial meaning terms, is getting this negative sign applied to both parts of it. So what I like to do is I like to just go ahead and multiply both the terms in the binomial by negative 1 so that I get the negative distributed. So negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. And now I'll rewrite everything else that I have not touched. All right, 3x minus 5x combining similar terms, is going to be negative 2x. And I haven't done anything with the 7 or the 13, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Minus, oh my goodness, minus 7, subtracting 7. So I have negative 2x is equal to, uh, what is that, 6. And so what is the opposite of multiplying x by negative 2? Dividing x by negative 2, divided by negative 2. So we have x is equal to negative 3, because a positive divided by negative is a negative. So we have an answer of negative 3. All right, number 11. So we have 3x times 4x minus 5 minus 30 is equal to 4x times 3x plus 1 plus 8. And so the first thing we're going to do here is recognize that a monomial that's placed right next to a binomial means that we're multiplying this monomial to both things, both terms inside the binomial. So 3x times 4x is 12x squared. 3x times negative 5 is going to be negative 15x. We still have the minus 30, which is equal to, and we have the same condition here, where we have a monomial that's being multiplied by a binomial. 4x times 3x is 12x squared. 3x times 1 is going to be 4x. And I still have the plus 8. So now I realize at this point you're thinking, oh my goodness, I have x squareds and I'm asked to solve and I don't know how to do that yet. But wait, notice how I have 12x squared on the left, the right side and 12x squared on the right side which means if I subtract 12x squared to both sides of the equal sign, they'll cancel out. And I won't have any x squareds, which is exactly what I wanted in the first place. So I'm going to bring down everything that I have not dealt with. All right, so now I'm going to add 15x to both sides. And the reason why I'm adding 15x is because I want to, uh, it's just easier if everything is positive. I could subtract 4x from both sides, but then I have to deal with that negative, which isn't a bad thing, but I just prefer it this way. And I would imagine most kids would also. So if I have 4x's and I add 15x's, I have a total of 19x's plus 8. So subtract 8 from both sides, subtract 8 from both sides. So I get negative 38 is equal to 19x. Well, what's the opposite of multiplying x by 19? That's right, dividing x by 19. I'm gonna move it up so I have a little more room. So let's divide both sides of the equal sign by 19. So I get negative 2 is equal to x. Oh, that one wasn't too bad, now was it? Oh, give me a break. You're playing nitro type. Ha, 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 ha. All right, finally, not finally, but <laughs> number 12, we have 5x minus 2 times 3x plus 4 
And that's equal to 3x minus 5 times 3, sorry, 5x plus 1 plus 15. All right, when you have two binomials that are next to each other, it means that you're multiplying both binomials together. So that means rainbows and smiley faces. Foil for those people who prefer to use the foil method, whatever is fine. 5x times 3x is going to be 15x squared. Cross that out because I've done it. 5x times 4 is going to be 20x. Cross that out because we've dealt with it. Negative 2 times 3x is going to be negative 6x. Cross off. Negative 2 times 4 is going to be negative 8. So we get 15x squared plus 14x minus 8. Now on the right side, same process. 3x times 5x is going to be 15x squared. 3x times 1 is going to be 3x. Five, negative 5 times negative, or <laughs> positive 5x is going to be negative 25x. 5 times 1 is negative 5. So let's combine the similar terms. If I have 3x's and I take 25 of them away, I end up with negative 22x minus 8. But I still have this plus 15, so I'll bring that down too. So let's combine these similar terms here. Negative 8 plus 15. Well, negative 8 plus 15 is just going to be better known as 7. So I'm going to just write positive 7. All right, and again, we end up with x squareds. But thankfully, I have an equal amount of x squareds on both sides of the equal sign. So if I subtract 15x squared from both sides, they will cancel out. And I'll just be left with 14x minus 8 is equal to negative 22x plus 7. All right, so let's get the x's together so they can have a party. What's the opposite of subtracting or negative 22x? Positive 22x. So I end up with 36x minus 8 is equal to 7. All right, so then the next thing that I'm going to do is make sure I haven't made any mistakes so far. <laughs> so we have negative 5, negative 5 times that. Oh shoot, that's 5. Alright, I've made a mistake. Negative 5, I mistook that for an 8. So I have negative 5 plus 15. So negative 5 plus 15 is 10, not 7. Yes. So then this positive 10 is going to be here. I'm really sorry if you caught that when I was doing it. Good for you. I'm sorry. That was not. That's a negative 5. You need to write so you can understand your own handwriting. All right. So now what's the opposite of subtracting 8? Adding 8. So I get... 36x is equal to 18. So then, what's the opposite of multiplying by 36? Dividing by 36. And I get x is equal to 1 half. And yes, it's possible to have an answer that is a fraction. Now that is a pretty long problem. Wouldn't you agree, buddy? Look at it. Oh. He is marveling at the length of the problem and the detail and precision at which you need to work on it. Well, I told you there were going to be times when a problem would take almost a whole page. Right yeah, look at all that work for one problem. And that day has come. All right, last problem, number 13. Uh, we are solving for t. We want t by itself. So we have a is equal to p plus p r t. We want t by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my train tracks. And I'm going to subtract p from both sides. And I get a 
minus p is equal to p r t. What's the opposite of multiplying t by p and r? Dividing by p and r. And so I get a minus minus p divided by p r is equal to t. And there we go. We have gotten the t all by itself.